Welcome back. This is Dan B with the TDF Data Bridge version 3 installation guide. The question I receive more often is, is my bike compatible with TDF Data Bridge? On previous versions of the program, the only compatible bikes were the Proform TDF 4.0 and 5.0. But this new version will work with almost every bike from the Proform, Nodi Track and Freemotion catalog. For the most updated information, I suggest you download the demo and check the installation guide including the zip file. There you will find which models are compatible at the moment, as well as a roadmap indicating what bikes will be supported in the near future. Also, on that same document you'll find all the details of the step-by-step -step installation procedure shown on this video. Next, I wanted to take a minute to explain how this program works. Think of this program as a proxy between your bike and the training app. On one end, the program will talk to your bike console to extract real-time exercise data, as well as inject new orders such as incline and target power changes. On the other end, the program will talk to your training app, sending the data extracted from the bike and receiving exercise or course data. The protocols used between the program, the bike and the training application will vary depending on your bike and the wireless technology supported by your training application. Bluetooth and BLE support will be added during beta test phase 2. During beta test phase 1, the only wireless protocol supported towards the training application will be ANT+. You will need two and plus adapters plugged into your computer or Mac to run this program. All communications between the bike and TDF data bridge will happen over your wireless LAN network. Now, to begin with the installation, you'll need to download a couple of third-party programs first. It is important to note that every program or application mentioned in this video will run on your PC or Mac. Since the introduction of TDF Data Bridge version 3, no more configuration changes are required on the console of the bike. The first program you'll need to download is called SADIG. SADIG is a USB driver manager for Windows that we will use to make sure that the AMP Plus adapters are running a specific driver version which is different from the drivers installed by default on Windows. Please note that if you are a Mac user, you must keep this step. You can download this program for free from the URL shown here or simply by running a quick search on Google. The version available for download right now is 2.5. Once the download is complete, please do not run the program. We will use this program later. The other program you will need is Node.js. Node.js is an open source server environment. Once again, you can download the program using the link provided here, or you can simply Google it. In the download page, you'll be presented with a number of options. Make sure you download the LTS version for your Windows or Mac computer. Once the download is complete, just double click on the file to run the installer program. Follow the instruction using the default options until the installation is complete. Windows users might want to reboot for the first time at this moment. Before starting with the next step, make sure that you have both AMP Plus adapters connected to your PC. After rebooting, search for the SADIC program and make sure that you run it in administrator mode. For that, just double click on the SADIC program file and select the Run as Administrator option. Once the program is open, on the top bar, click in Options and then select List All Devices. This will create a list of all your connected USB devices. Select one 
of the Amplus adapters from the list and check the current driver installed as well as the device ID. Next, make sure that the driver shown at the left of the green arrow is called Live USB 0 version 1.2.6. If the driver version is newer or different, select the correct driver from the list at the right of the green arrow and click on Downgrade or Replace button depending on the case. The driver update might take a few minutes. Please hold until the process is complete. If the process ends with an error, then you might want to close the program, reboot the computer and start again. If you are a Windows user, please reboot your computer again. If you haven't done this already, this is a good moment to install your favorite training apps. And finally, the last step is to download and install TDF Data Bridge Free. As usual, to download the latest version of the demo, all you have to do is go to the blog and search for the download link. It's probably going to be on the first post but otherwise you're going to find it on the links uh, column there on the right of the page. If you are a full version user instead, you will receive your download link via email directly in your inbox. The files are hosted in Mega Upload, so um, sometimes you will find that the page is quite slow, but in general it works well. One um, question I receive very often about Mega is, should I subscribe or download any software from them in order to download the file? And the answer is no. All the downloads from Mega are for free and you don't need to download the download manager from them, nor sign up for any service. To install the program, all you have to do is copy the zip file you just downloaded into a new folder. Please unpack the file using the exact same folder structure. Next you will open a command line terminal from Windows and change directory to the folder where you just unpack the file. For the next step, you're going to write npm install. Provided you install Node.js correctly, this command will basically download every software library required by the program to run. As soon as npm install command finishes, please copy the, the contents in this folder into this other folder. You will be asked if you want to overwrite. Click yes. And you're all set. Now it's time to run the demo. First of all, turn on your bike and start a manual workout. Make sure you change gear a couple times until you hear the audible signal. That means that your gears are activated. If you're going to use sim mode with your workout, then that's it, you don't have to change anything else. If you are going to use ERG mode instead, make sure that you exit the manual workout and leave the bike in the welcome screen. Windows users might want to copy paste the included shortcut from the program folder to the desktop. If you use the same folder structure and folder names, 
you will be able to use it as well. Otherwise, just open a command line window and click node TDF DB. As soon as the program starts, it will open a web browser page with the connection settings window. All you have to do there is type the IP address of your bike and select the different workout modes and wireless protocols you want to use. Once you're done with that, click on the start button and that's it. Once the program is running, it's always wise to check the command line window for error messages or warnings. If everything's okay there, all you have to do is run Swift or your favorite training application. If this is the first time you're running Swift, you're gonna have to search for the different sensors. The sensors that you need to pair are power source, cadence, and controllable sensors. Once again, check the CMD window often for any errors. It might take up to one minute to detect the sensors the first time. If Swift freezes or it doesn't detect any sensors, you might want to check your AMP Plus adapters using Simulant. In the description below, you will find a link to a video that shows you how to test your AMP Plus adapters using Simulant. If your AMP adapters are okay, then there might be a problem with the drivers, but not the drivers that you change with Sadik but the ones I'm using on the software library. For that, you want to change the contents on this folder with the contents on this other folder. This time, make sure you rename the original file in case you want to roll back the changes. That should fix the sensor pairing problems. In the next two sections, I'm going to review the full version and how to enable the ergmo feature using the web bike console. The startup process is the same, except that you'll have more features available. As of today, the full version offers incline feedback, erg mode, downhill boost, and broadcast HRM functions. The web bike console, on the other hand, offers more gauges and a flip switch to move from sim mode to erg mode on the fly. And talking about erg mode, this is how you activate that feature using TDF Data Bridge with Swift. First of all, you want to make sure that you select one training and that erg mode is activated. Right after that, if you go to the CMD window, you will see that erg mode is disabled. Next, you want to go to your web by console and click on the flip switch to enable the erg mode and the automatic resistance changes. And that's it, you're all set. When erg mode is activated, workout information is going to be reflected on the web by console as well. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you want to stay updated with the latest information or tutorial videos, please hit subscribe and the bell icon. For more information, please visit my blog. Thanks a lot for watching and ride on.